for joining. Uh, today I have uh, uh, Aritra. He's a very good friend and uh, a very good data scientist as uh, far as I know. I've known him for a very good while right now and uh, there have been very great stories I've been hearing about him. And uh, probably th rather than me telling about him, why don't I introduce you guys to Aritra. Hi, Aritra. How are you doing today? Hi, Raghav. Hey, uh, thanks a lot for bringing me into to this thing. I'm doing well. Uh, it's been a it's been a great month. Uh, you know, it's festive season, so things are always happy and positive. Good. I mean, it, it, that's that's very good. I mean, people who are not watching, uh, who don't know festive season, this is uh, uh, in India. There's a festival called Dashara. It's of ten. Uh, it's a 10 day good big festival and specifically where Aritra is it's a big festival I know Aritra you come from Kolkata India it, it's yeah. a big festival there uh, Aritra why, why don't you probably introduce uh, our uh, viewers about you what's your education what's your work experience any specific hobbies whatever you want to do whatever you want to introduce okay yeah, yourself. I'd love to so um, yeah my name is Aritra and uh I've been in this scene for about two and a half years. I've been working in, in, in analytics and data science for a while, but uh, I guess, I mean, that's more of public knowledge at this point. So let me tell you a little bit about how, how you know, how I kind of had my chance at uh, getting at this life. So, uh, you know, I started out, uh, you know, uh, in, in school, I was uh, a science student, as they call it, in, in India. And then I moved on to commerce in my 11th and 12th because I wanted to explore something cool and new like uh, accounting, uh, commerce, uh, economics. Um, and I, I, that's when I kind of fell in love with economics in school. And, and, and in school, you know, I was, I was not really uh, the most regular guy. I, I would have like 60% attendance in classes uh, because most of the time, you know, I would just be sitting at home uh, watching a Brad Pitt movie or, you know, watching some anime <laughs> or, uh, going on YouTube, watching something cool and new, and the internet, you know, um, when I was in school, by that time, we didn't have that dial-up connection, which I, I, I think you would be familiar with it, Raghav, right? Yeah, when you had yeah, that, I, yeah. that call, you had that weird noise, and then... <laughs> I'm, I'm a little old, yes. <laughs> yeah. so, so I was there, yeah. but when, when that sort of uh, connection dial-up was, was a thing, but by the time I was in school, you know, seventh, eighth grade, um, uh, I fortunately had broadband, with, with these modems and just a single line and so on. So that was fun. Things were a lot fast. We were talking about what 512 kbps fast. So and yeah, from that to what, 300 mbps now, it's uh, it's been a wild ride. Uh, but but that, that kind of kind of exposed me and helped me learn a lot of things. So for example, you know the English that you see me speaking now, that has that that is a direct result of me bunking school and watching. Hollywood movies. Uh, in the movies. <laughs> it's, <Yeah. laughs> it, it's it sounds weird because you know uh, you would expect most of your education, especially when it comes to subjects and linguistics and languages and so on, would be from a formal point. Um, for me, it's been completely different, very very unusual. Right? I watch these dubbed anime, these these Japanese uh, cartoons and stuff, and you know I, I would pick up and try to speak like them while the anime is running and try to see if I could uh, get a good grasp. And um, that's how I sort of learned. So school was for me, uh, nobody, if, if you ask anybody from school, nobody would be able to uh, say that, yeah, Aritho seems like a data science guy. And they would probably think I would be more of, a, of an artist, maybe a sketch, uh, a sketch artist or something like that. Um, and, and fast forward to college, uh, things changed, uh, took a while turn. I, I moved it to, uh, I w went for a BSc in, in computer science and I minored in economics and maths and stats. So I went to Symbiosis uh, School for Liberal Arts and they uh, had a unique program, right? So they didn't care so much about your uh, plus two and your 10th results and your 11th and 12th results, right? Uh, the first year was general ed. So you study a lot of subjects, philosophy, political science, math, everything. And it was in your second year because it was a four-year degree, much like you would have in the US, right? So, I mean, Raghav, right. you'll be really familiar with, with the whole concept yeah, right now. Yeah, I, I do. I do, <laughs> so, I do, yeah. Uh, it got, it was interesting. And, and in my second year, you know, I decided to just, you know, try something um, I was avoiding for the longest time, computer science and math. In school, I was just barely scraping by because I had no interest. In college, I had great professors, I had great peers, and, you know, I wanted to challenge myself. So it was fun. My parents were so afraid. They were like, 
are you sure you're going to pass these tests? Because, you know, spending a lot on your undergrad degree, <laughs> we just hope that you pass. We, we don't expect you to uh, ace things, but at least, you know, there, there better be some returns of that. And uh, fortunately, uh, you know, like I said, you create faculty and excellent peers. Uh, um, I finally, you know, my interest in these fields uh, was rekindled. Um, and I started learning a lot about that. And in college, my attendance would be 98%, give or take, from 60% wow. to 98%. And, uh, you know, by the time I graduated, I might have been at the top 3% of my class. So things took a radical turn. And that kind of makes me believe that if I can do it, anybody can do it. Anybody can anything, do it, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. from a demotivated uh, guy who would only spend his time watching TV, somebody with purpose and determination to crack multivariable calculus well that was ordinary and partial uh, so you so you just you just said multivariable calculus so how did data science really come into your life i mean and i mean as part of your job or you were striving for it i know you just said bsc computer science and math you would you, you really uh, turned out to be top three percent in your class but and you just said multivariable calculus, you know, all of a sudden, I know you said statistics, you said economics, you have arts, anime, a lot of different things going on, right? And all of a sudden you have this multivariable calculus thing, what you just said, into data science. How did that transition happen? Oh, that's a nice catch. Um, it was actually <laughs> after I was introduced to data science that I decided to take an elective in uh, multivariable calc. Uh, I figured that a lot of things that I learned there, especially derivatives and integrals, right? Uh, the way you're taught in school is very different from the way you're taught in college. So in third year, I was in an econometrics class and it was a 7.30 class, right? it was 7.30 a.m. in the okay. morning. And uh, it was one of those very few courses where I would be absent from the class. I was still maintaining the bare minimum, like 75, 80%. But um, I would tend to bunk because uh, it was so early in the morning. But we had a great professor. Um, he, he was a really, really strict about a lot of things, but he was a data scientist himself. He's still a data scientist and he was quite young as well. Um, so I, I would bunk a lot of classes and one fine day we had, so econometrics by, by the way, you know, it's, it's effectively you know, using statistics to answer a lot of economic problems, right? You, know, you have these macroeconomic models, uh, you have the classic supply demand problems, demand forecasting, these are some classic cases of econometrics problems. So when uh, the professor randomly dished out a, a, a project on um, a linear regression, if I'm not wrong, uh, he wanted us to use this uh, language called R, right? Until then, I had only known C, because uh, you, you learn C in, in every <laughs> college, in Cambridge Computer Science. Yes. Course. And yes. I learned a bit of Java, uh, which is also something mm -hmm. you might learn in school or something, right? Uh, but I, right. I, I didn't like Java as much. I like C, it was quite structured and procedural. I, I love the vibe. I didn't like Java. I was a little all over the place and verbose, uh, much like me. Uh, but <laughs> overall, um, it was R, a linear regression, and I got to know a day before the submission. Right? So, you know, with all the adrenaline in my heart, I, uh, <laughs> started, the, I started the assignment at uh, 1 a.m. in the morning, um, and it was due at, I think, by 7.30. And uh, I fired up, you know, I installed all the prerequisites, you know, R Studio and R and went to CRAN and I downloaded all the right libraries and stuff, but I had never used it. So I went on YouTube, I opened a couple of papers by Hadley Wickham, uh, you know, quite famous for his grammar of graphics papers. If you, if you get a chance to look, look at that, very, mm -hmm. very lucid readings, right? About how you really think about crafts. Um, so I, I checked a couple of these things, I'm like varied sources, none of which was in a classroom. Uh, uh, along with linear regression. So I had a hunch of linear regression by that because I'd taken enough stats classes. Uh, but, but to get it all together was a mammoth task. And, and I you know, followed the steps, uh, saw the rubric, wanted to understand what I wanted to do. Built a nice R markdown file. Uh, my professor loves markdown. He, he never expected a markdown file. He expected an R script. Right. I made a freaking right. markdown. And I was like, yeah. and, you know, by the time it was 6 a.m., I was actually done. Um, uh, quite, uh, feeling quite <laughs> nervous because I, I wasn't sure uh, if I was doing the right thing. And then I, and, and then I conveniently emailed uh, the assignment, but I had to skip class because I was too tired. <laughs> and, then I the class, and then the class ends and my friends are calling me and they're like, hey, the professor was really looking for you. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I know where <laughs> they're going with this. <laughs> 
And the next day, um, you know, when I come to class, he stops me and was like, hey, you're the guy who sent the R markdown file. Like, yeah, that, that was, I, I assume others had done it too, but yeah, I guess I was one of them, one of you. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a fantastic submission. I loved your, uh, uh, the work so much. I was wondering if you want me to, to you know, chat with my HR and see if you could get an internship. Wait, 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 you're in, that's that's a lot of unpack. What what what's going on here? So then he you know, took me to the side. We had a nice conversation about data science because this was 2017, right? Data science was still relatively nascent, especially in India. Okay. Then he told me about a lot of things, like how what I did was something that he would expect in his team. You know, by that time he was uh, working with another uh, very well-funded Indian startup, and he said that what you know what if you want this to be a career, this this could be it. I'm like, well, you know what? Let me let me sleep on it and see how it goes. And from that point onwards, you know, I was always in his class at 7:30 a.m. I really wanted to learn what all uh, you know can be expected out of the conference. So, so what really happened during those five hours of 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. really mattered uh, to be to you. And it might be just our right. Uh, but there are so many things when I interacted mm -hmm. with you uh, before, and there were some forums where we, I saw your uh, writings and stuff. I mean, I've, I've seen some blog posts which you write. I've done some homework before I came. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, look, yes. Look, yeah, <laughs> so, looks like you've uh, improved or uh, learned many different things around that, right? So, R was just one thing. Our viewers will be really interested, you know. Is learning data science easy? Can anyone learn it? Um, you know, many people have that, uh, they introspect themselves and think, oh, I think it's too tough. No, it is easy, but a lot of work. Uh, yes, it is easy, a lot of work. Some, if you, you do the two by two matrix, there are many different thoughts when it keeps yeah. coming in. What is your take if somebody wants to start learning? or start getting into this field? What do you think? I mean, you had that professor who you yeah. did that 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. thing, right? But you are yeah. the person right now and for many people watching out there, right? What would you tell them? Well, you know, uh, like many things in life uh, and, you know, uh, the, the, the important thing for you is to get that, uh, what we casually in college call the gateway drug. <laughs> so, in, in, in most cases, R for me was that gateway drug, right? I could never connect with data so well, not even with Excel until I came up with R and data frames. So for a lot of people who think data science is hard, um, honestly, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's overwhelming. <laughs> okay, let me, let me rephrase that, right? It's not, it's not hard. It's overwhelming because there are so many variables. It's almost like, you know, you, you're a kid and you, you know you want to be a surgeon. But you know that you can't just be a surgeon the next day. You have to go through a lot of drooling work. Um, and perhaps a data scientist doesn't have to go through the same processes and the licensing and, and, the, and the lawsuits, um, you know, if you can help it. Um, but, <laughs> but for a lot of us, right, it's, it's a lot about finding that, 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 that data we find. You find that, uh, you find something that you really click with. It could be the statistics, right? I, in, in data science, I enjoy the statistics and the impact more than I enjoy coding. Coding is a means to an end. Tomorrow, you know, today I'm coding in R, tomorrow I'll be coding in Python, the day after I'll be coding in Rust. It, it doesn't matter, right? And Raghav, you will know it all too well with the yeah. way you have worked in data engineering, right? What yeah. once used to be RDD, right? With uh, your Java RDD or Scala RDD has now become a PySpark data frame. So things change, yeah. they evolve, right? So, but, but at the same time, at one point, you need to find that particular thing that you can, you'll be happy sticking with. A, maybe a, a lot of people say it can be a compromise, right? You're picking what language. So that's one question I get a lot. Should I start with R? Should I start with Python? Should I? Yeah. Right? I mean, it, it's- One it's, question what we have, what I generally got from the community there uh, uh, is like, when they started learning statistics, it gets really lengthy and boring uh, or something yeah. like that. I mean, did you feel it so, or like, is it like probably you started solving in real time challenges? How did you really overcome that kind of challenge? That's, yeah, I'm asking a community question. That's one of the community questions I got. <laughs> with, with stats, um, so I, I um, in school, I made the rookie mistake of thinking that once I study economics, 
math and my life are going to be completely divorced. It's going to be no math, it's just going to be economics. Um, and as it turns out, once I did economics in, in, in college, I realized that I could understand economics a lot more intuitively and explain economics a lot more intuitively with the math. It's the same with stats. I thought that, you know, I could do stats really well, uh, you know, just solve sums and, you know, we'll find out standard deviation and so on, um, rather than, you know, dealing with the grueling theory of it. Um, the thing I would like to say is that just do it, you know, it, um, you don't need, so initially when you're studying it formally, you don't need to understand central limit theorem. You don't need to understand, um, you know, how the formula for uh, Spearman's correlation uh, you know, actually works or Pearson's correlation actually works. In the beginning, you just need to know mechanically, you know, what happens when you solve this correlation problems? What is the implication? So when you say height and weight are correlated, what's the first thought in your mind? Is it, are you, do you go back into thinking, uh, you know, what was the formula that I used to do that? No, at that point, you just care no. that, okay, I found a 90% correlation between them. What does that mean? Does that mean that, you know, if, if my height increases, my weight, weight will increase or, or vice versa? Well, probably. But, so it, it, it's always to, to do statistics, to understand it. Take a problem statement. Try to understand that problem statement from 10 different angles and you will come down to the truth because I didn't understand a lot of statistics when I started out. And now by doing it, right, by exploring a problem from four different angles, I can appreciate. <laughs> and until you learn to appreciate the hard stats in the work, you'll not be interested. And, and through no fault of your own, right? I mean, you don't, the expectation, you know, from colleges and maybe even parents and employers sometimes is that, well, you better know how this thing works. Well, uh, yes. So, yeah. And that's well, I mean, you're you're absolutely right. So let's say there are two spectrums of viewers when generally have and anybody, right? One who is passing out of college, he wants to upscale in data science. How do you think he should approach? And a person who is already working in a job-based scenario, if he wants to cross the link, cross the link to data science, how should they approach? Any kind of tips? Okay. Um, let me start with the uh with a person who is already in, in a job, right? Uh, if you're in a job, you could be IT, it could be manufacturing, doesn't matter. Chances are that you've had some amount of time, maybe a year, two, three, um, working in some domain. You're in IT, you're a Java developer, perhaps you're working in the insurance domain, helping big insurance companies, right? So that means um, even though you're a developer, right? You can, you can code and build applications for them. You wouldn't be a very good one if you didn't understand what that application is going to be used for. If you're a developer, there's going to be likely a product manager and a, and a UX team that's going to give you these stories and epics that you need to complete, right? right. And in right. trying to complete, in trying to even understand these stories, right, you have to invariably understand um, how insurance as an industry works. What is an underwriter? Uh, how does your health uh, impact your, how does smoking or non-smoking impact the health, uh, uh, health insurance and things? So you learn the domain if you're already in a job really well. Once you understand that domain, you can switch uh, within that domain to a different role, right? Uh, a career, we oftentimes think, maybe even fantasize that career is going to be this linear path. But much like data science, 99% <laughs> of things are not going to be linear. Uh, there will be aspects of it that will be linear, and that's at a, in a very, it's like that micro cosm, you know, this tiny thing. But um, get, the, get the domain understanding well, um, and then start looking at that domain's data. Because before you're a data scientist, you're a data janitor, right? Okay. Understand the data. Before you're a j data janitor, you're like a data PhD. So you understand that <laughs> data really. And before you're a data PhD, you're a PhD of the process. How is that data being generated? How is that data being collected? Right? What's the metadata around that data? So get the domain, understand data within that domain. And you have that exposure, say, if you're a developer, if you're even marketing, right? you would get these important aspects. And figure out what your skill really is. And then you can make an easy move towards a data science role. It doesn't have to be a data scientist in your designation or ML engineer. It could be a marketing specialist, but day in and day out, you know, you're just trying to find out what's a better CPC, uh, you know, what's a better based on say geographies or something. You're doing data science. It's just 
wrapped up in a different uh, package, right? That's that's for the working folks. So I mean, so, we'll go to the college in a second. So you're trying to say, start getting your hands dirty with data, hmm? and probably the janitor piece, right? That's the janitor piece. Yeah. yeah. So so start getting dirty with your uh, with the data available to you, and especially in your domain. Start learning around it, and then. Uh, use some skills, what you just said, probably R, Python, whatever you want to do, if if it is feasible. But primarily focus on your domain and gradually go into that, such that data science automatically seeps into you. Yeah, because at the time, uh, problem well defined is a problem ninety percent solved. Right? You can't define a problem if you can't understand how the outcome is going to impact the stakeholder, the person who wants you to solve it, right? Um, and no amount of R, Python, and statistical techniques is going to save you from that. You can learn these things. I was lucky enough that I was in jobs and I had mentors who took a chance on me because they cared a lot more about me trying to critically think through problems than me already knowing, say, support vector machines or you know perceptrons, right? They, they didn't care so much about that. Of course, it's important if you're trying to be a medical data scientist working in pharmacovigilance or pharma pharmacogenetics or something. Well, that's a that's a more uh, the margin of error for you is significantly less in in a in a role like that. But for the for the average data scientist that's trying to work in a in, you know something a little bit broad like say marketing or manufacturing, um, it's more important for you to understand the problem uh, and to be aligned with your stakeholders before you even embark on that data science journey. So that's that's okay. what I would say, yeah. Cool, so- uh, How about the college, yeah. With college, um, so college, it's a buffet, right? You, uh, in college, okay, in college, uh, it's hard, right? You, you have so many options, right? You could be an instrumentation engineer trying to get into data science manufacturing. You could be okay. a student of uh, business administration, right, BBA, trying to get into uh, financial forecasting sort of a data science field, right? Yeah. You could be a marketing yeah. student trying to unravel digital marketing by data-driven decision-making that we all love now. Uh, all, at least we Correct. all love to talk about now. <laughs> yes. I don't know how much of us really do it, but we love to talk about it. Yeah. But no, so we now, do it. We do it every day. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic, right? I mean, that's yeah. it's always awesome to hear that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so with, with so many options, um, with, with this buffet of options, you want to make sure that you know you 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 have by last three to four years to figure it out. You you must find some synergy between um, a certain domain. A lot of people say I know personally, like they have gravitated toward mark towards marketing really well. They have a very nice creative sense. They understand human beings really well. They they can empathize with the <clears throat> with the customers and the people. Um, that's amazing. That's a good starting point. Good. And in fact, it's not just a starting point for marketing type of data science, but a lot of skills like empathy, right? You could translate that to a UX career. You know, my personal bias slash belief is that every problem is a UX problem, right? <laughs> if, if it's not, then you haven't understood the problem. But but it, it's it, it's important that you find one of these things, right? For the For the guy who's out in the field, they're already in a domain. It's a lot easier. Right? They just need to understand right. that a little bit more. For the person starting out, you don't know. It could be anything. And you know, nine out of ten times in your first job, that what you think might click will likely not click. That's okay. That's what your first five years of your career are for. So, but make sure that you know your basics are strong. Right. Um, um, make sure that you understand uh, what an object is, what a method is. You know how a method differs from a function. Right. Make sure what is a more efficient way of writing code. Make sure to avoid for loops if you can say <laughs> if you can save them for another day. Um, these are some very basic, what I would call best practices when it comes to coding. Similarly, there would be best practices when it comes to statistics. Right. For example, there's an over reliance on the p value in stats that we see. Right. We you know we have the strict rule. You know zero anything above or less than zero point zero five. You know we accept. <laughs> yes. Accept or fail to reject and reject. Okay. And that's stupid. That's stupid. It's a, it's a very stupid rule that was created a long time ago when <laughs> uh, people were very different, right? When processes were very different, things have changed, right? And the whole concept, if you study, dig a little deeper into what p-value really is, you will realize it's it sets out with the, with the motive of, a, of what we call um, um, a false dichotomy. 
right? You know, if you fail to reject or you reject, no, there could be other things. We need to, we need to keep more often than not, the answer is to just gather more samples, right? So, but, but these are basics, right? That you want to be yeah. really good with. So yeah, that's what the college so, students. So if I, if I if I understand, I mean, I I have one more point probably what they learned from you, but I'll put it again. So start getting even though in whatever uh, undergrad or graduation you are in, try to establish your mindset towards the domain if it's possible and start learning some of the basic programming skills and stat skills. And if you start liking it, build it over a period of three to four years. And if you, you get comfortable. One, what one, that is, that's a very good suggestion. I mean, uh, it happens gradually, right? Yeah. Don't, I mean, I know courses and stuff. Okay, you wanna learn R, start learning R, probably uh, take a data set, play with it. But one thing, one thing what it really hit me in all this conversation is that one to 6 a.m. You, you go to your professor and he offering you something as an internship to a startup, right? And he took you out and spoke to a data scientist, what told you what is data science. It's somewhere it, it, it hits in your mind, it's in your mind, right? So what one thing, what I can probably add to you, what you said is, yep. if possible, speak to data scientists. Oh, right. I think, um, yeah. I guess it's a little underrated and I guess it, it didn't occur to me at all because I had that privilege. But um, if, you don't, if you don't have that privilege, make that privilege, find yeah. a way to talk to the right people. There will be people in your corner trying to support you because chances are they were where you are at right now back in the day, right? So you're, you're right. I was lucky and I was persistent. Uh, not that I was persistently lucky, but, but it's important to, to, to yes. make make hay while the sun shines. You know, I was lucky. That I knew the professor was, was going to be there at least for a semester, so I made it made a conscious choice to get there. Once I realized that, you know, there could be a lot I could learn from that person. So you're right. Um, if you can find a mentor early on, nothing yeah. like it because a mentor can tell you exactly. Because a mentor is somebody who understands you, right? They they understand what you might like maybe even more than you know yourself because we and often probably this to... video can be the mentor to somebody and somebody <laughs> might reach out to you through to the comments or something you know I, you never know i i suppose you know i'm, I'm always open to uh helping curious <laughs> minds you know that's that's never I, I enjoy this thing right when you talk about hobbies right we we had initially you we were asking about that one of my hobbies is to uh talk to people when they are you know in need of some kind of a counseling doesn't have to be career doesn't have to be uh, you know, strictly uh, related to data science, but that's something that I do. Um, uh, mostly happens on LinkedIn, so I would get people pinging me and can we get on a call? I wanted to. I saw your post. I wanted to learn a little bit. That that's fun. I I I, I revel in that. I, I enjoy because uh, it's simple. At one point, I was a very lost and unmotivated child. I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, and then there was this sudden ray of hope when my professor realized something that I could be good at that I didn't even know myself that kind of pulled me out of that you know and now here we are so yeah good I mean what, what else we want as long as long as you think uh, the best part of this whole story and this whole discussion according to uh, me and us I think is like you, if you think you can do it probably you'll be able to do it Right. That's yeah. yeah, probably. And that when you that you think peace, it can come today, tomorrow. I don't know when, but for everybody. Uh, but I think what we can do is uh, uh, get this uh, video out and probably see anybody wants to any, have any questions. What I'll do, Aritra, is I'll put the um, uh, in the comment section as in the description, I'll put your LinkedIn profile Ooh, uh, if yeah. you're OK. Right. And That's generally good. what we do is uh, we have a standard Google form where we have questions in it and we enter those questions and these questions uh, come to me as well as, or if there are any comments and we'll reach out to you. Is that okay? Sounds, sounds fair to me, man. I'm, I'm happy to help. But, so anyways, thanks a lot, Aritra, for this. This was a wonderful discussion and uh, hopefully we catch some time uh, later on anything specifically technical or something on a later time. Sounds good to me. Let's let's do that. Thank you so much for inviting me uh, for this, Raghav. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Good night. Take care.
Bye. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Bye. Bye-bye.